Hello everyone and welcome back to part three of my mini series of cheap, affordable, but somehow exciting cars that are attainable for the younger driver in the UK. Now in part one, we had a beautiful classic 1990 BMW. In part two, we had the lovely and diminutive Renault Sport Twingo, a great little back row blaster. And today, as promised, we are going all out luxury. And if you're British and you want luxury, is there really anything better than a Jag? Probably not. And this Jag belongs to a 19 year old by the name of Sam. And not only that, but this 19 year old's Jag is actually a part of the family. You see, his grandfather bought it new in 2002 and it has been part of the family ever since. Now this is an XJ, but it's an XJ Sport, which means that it's slightly cooler and a little bit less fuddy-duddy. Now what does the Sport get you? Well, they dechromed a lot of the car, you have these sportier seats, although I have absolutely no experience whatsoever of the standard seats to be able to tell you how much of a difference it makes, and an allegedly stiffer suspension. You've got this brilliant view out the front. I mean, you can see all of that glorious bonnet, and in fact I've put a camera there, especially so that you can admire how wonderful it is. And this is a real, real serious big car. It's been a long time since I've driven something that actually feels like this. In fact, what it reminds me of is the Mercedes 600 SEL that I drove. And much like that car, these can be had for essentially peanuts. And I really do mean that. You can pick these up from a couple of grand and they are quite literally a huge amount of car for the money. Now, this is a 3.2 litre V8. And this was the entry level one. You could also have a 4 litre or a 4 litre supercharged V8 as well. The uh, top one putting out about 370 horsepower. This one is a far more modest 240 with about 233 pound foot of torque. Numbers that are not really dramatically different from the 3 litre V6 that Jaguar put in the then new S type, which is just a, a reused Ford lump. Now, as you can probably tell, the weather out there is pretty poor. We have this single wiper blade doing its absolute best, but this car does really feel like it's hewn from granite, except the dash, which is rattling quite a bit. You see, this car comes from what many might consider to be a dark portion of Jaguar's history when they were owned by Ford. Now this car actually can trace its roots back to the XJ40 chassis car of the mid 1980s. And this was essentially the last of line. So this was replaced by the all aluminium XJ in sort of 2003. So this is the last of the steel bodied cars. Now I remember this car quite well because I once had an argument with my father about them. You see, I was about 11 or maybe even 12 and dad wanted to get a new car and dad wanted to get an XJR and I remember looking at one it had a super spec the previous owner was Lord someone or other and at the time I don't think I really appreciated what it was that the Jag was what it could do or what a 370 horsepower supercharged V8 really meant I just looked at it and went, Dad, you cannot get one of those, it's an old man's car. And at the time, my dad wasn't that much of an old man, and to be honest, he's 60 this year, and uh, the things he gets up to still aren't very old man stuff, but anyway, he's actually currently on the lookout for one of these, and actually I've myself now mellowed, and I've kind of come round to what he might want from it. I mean, driving these roads, with which I am intimately familiar, because they're quite close to where I live, this car is just so serene. Now, I had to cancel a review yesterday on account of our delightful British weather, some of which you can see in action at the moment. We've got something called Storm Gareth coming through the country. 
And that was because that car was a very sporty mid-engine type thing that I had absolutely no interest in driving through the wet. This car, however, isn't really an issue because, you see, this isn't about performance. I'll get onto that in a minute. We'll see if it's actually got any or not. But that's not the point. This car is about pure, unadulterated luxury. And for the princely sum of a couple of grand, it gives you a lot of luxury. Now, these came exclusively with a five-speed automatic gearbox, which shifts fairly nicely, and there is a sport mode for the suspension. Now, even with the suspension in sport mode, it's still a very soft riding car and not one that is really designed to be hustled in any way, shape, or form. It does make quite a difference, actually, putting the sport mode on. It actually corners very flatly in comparison to when it's not. Now, this engine doesn't pull especially strongly. I'm just going to get it on a little bit of a straight in a minute. Now, this car is completely unmodified, which does surprise me because I would have thought that a 19-year-old with a V8 that he's got access to would have at least done the exhaust. And, and that may happen in the future, but it hasn't yet. And this car, as you would expect, is serenely quiet. It's just lovely for making progress. It's just, a, just a, a hint, just a hint of a roar there, but nothing showy. In fact, when I turned it on earlier, the starter motor was actually louder than the engine, and that says more about the engine than it does about the starter motor. Don't worry, that's not braking. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to be sat there poised to leap into the comment section to tell us about how expensive an old Jaguar is going to be to maintain. And I'm not going to argue that point, nor will Sam. Things can and will and have gone wrong with it. The prop shaft gave some issues. It seems to have an unusual appetite for front wheel bearings. It also seems to like putting its own wheels out of alignment or balance very easily as well. One good pothole and you need to go off and get your wheels rebalanced, so that's a bit of an oddity. However, in this car's favour are extremely low insurance premiums, this costing no more than a boring Corsa to its owner would have done to insure, and it's not really going to lose any money either. Now, this car is in very good condition, it wasn't when Sam took care of it, but he's obviously been looking after it. The underside has been rust-proofed, which is very important because not only are these steel, they are old British cars made from steel. So yes, tin worm is going to be something you're going to have to keep an eye on. In fact, it also seems to be something that afflicts the much more youthful S-Type as well. I was looking at buying one of those as a cheap runabout a couple of years ago, and the number of them failing MOTs quite seriously on rust was a little bit shocking. Let's put my foot down just a little bit. And it makes more noise. And it revs quite high. It revs to about 7,000 RPM. It does pick up some pace. But still, it just feels wrong, to be honest, to do that in this. I've also just knocked about five miles off the range by doing that. Um, and let's talk about that, shall we? Fuel economy. Well, it's not good, is it? It's an old... 3.2 litre V8 attached to an old-fashioned automatic gearbox. What what were you expecting? A diesel? Like, no, 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 no. I mean, the quoted fuel economy figure is something like 23 miles to the gallon, UK, of course. The good news is that the fuel tank is huge, so I suppose you have that to look forward to. I mean, you want to brace yourself when you do fill it up because yeah, current fuel prices you can put £100 in the tank of this thing. And honestly, what's surprising me most about this car is, slightly creaky dashboard aside, just how well put together the whole thing feels. It really, genuinely does feel like an old school luxury car. It, this genuinely is very much like driving that old Mercedes. And bear in mind, that Merc that I drove probably cost something like hundred grand when it was new, and I'm driving this thing around little country lanes for which it is not at all designed, but 
it's doing the job absolutely perfectly. The engine goes along nicely, the gearbox shifts smoothly, actually far better than my own car does. The steering wheel has even got all this real wood on it. And this interior, I mean, let's let's be honest here, okay, it's, it's a Jag. You want a nice interior. And GB Ford switch gear aside, this is a lovely, lovely place to be. I believe it is a one Jay Clarkson that once said that these sorts of cars should be like Blenheim Palace, but on wheels. And this really is. You know, this isn't fakey, plasticky crap. This is real wood. But being the sport trim does give the car that slightly more modern edge that I think really does lift it. I'm not a big fan of all the chrome everywhere and all that sort of stuff. And, and some of the cars I've seen as well, you can have even sort of darker trim than this, so it's, you know, it's less obviously sort of wood. I'm not generally a big fan of wood in cars, but somehow, if you describe the interior of this car to me, I'd say like, no, 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 that's horrible. It's everything I don't like on the interior of a car, you know, light colored headlinings, light colored leather, wood, all that sort of stuff. And yet somehow, in this car, it's perfect. It is absolutely everything that you'd want from a Jag. And driving through the Essex countryside, or as the case may be, now driving through the Suffolk countryside, I feel like I could own any one of these lovely, posh, old thatched houses around here. It really does give you that sort of vibe. It's such a, a proper car. I suspect most people, when Sam turns up in this, think that he's borrowed his granddad's car for the weekend rather than it actually being his own car. One of his friends even owns a slightly later XJR. Oh, and there's an orange Elise over there I've just driven past. There's a lot of nice cars hidden around here, and it took me quite a while to buy my first V8, which coincidentally was a BMW 645, in case you're interested. I love that car. It drank a lot, but there was just something great about it. It's just an old-school feeling about it, and this, in many ways, is, is even better than that car. It's not anywhere near as sporty, and uh, it's very wafty. But you know something? Yesterday I was driving along a piece of road that I know really, really well. And they've reduced the speed limit. It's gone from 60 to 40. And I was really annoyed. I was like, oh, this is a really nice piece of road. I, I love bombing down here when it's late and there's, there's no one around. And it, it, it's great fun. And somehow I think... If I was doing it in this, I just wouldn't care. Because there's something about this car that just relaxes me. And sometimes that is exactly what I want from a car. I don't necessarily need performance, I don't need sportiness, I don't want a hard ride. But this car is just automotive tranquility. And I think you'd struggle to beat it for pure luxury for this kind of money. So there you have it, the 2002 Jaguar XJ Sport. What a wonderful little car, actually. What a wonderful, massive car. It's huge, I mean, enormous. And the boots are really weird shape as well, and the handbrakes in a silly place down here. But I don't care at all, because it's just lovely. Lovely, 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 lovely. It's just, you know, I could almost fall asleep here, but I really shouldn't do that. That would be bad form. And there you go. That's the sort of end for now of my mini series on interesting alternative cars for younger car enthusiasts. If you have something you would like me to show to the world as part of this series, then please do get in touch on the usual channels. There, all the details are in the description below. For now, Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We're really trying to get the channel up to 30k in the next month or two, and it looks like we're going to do that, but we do need your help. Hit the like button and comment below. Which of the three cars I've featured this week, the BM, the Renault, or the Jag, would you take home? Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.